Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. So what is the best work surface for 3D Pen work? The truth is, the best surface is the one that's most appropriate for your project at hand. But how are you supposed to know which one that is? So let's look into it. Recently, I released a video called Seven Things You Want from Your Work Surface. And if you are in the process of researching this topic, you should definitely watch that one too. The link is above and also in the description. In that video, I shared what my favorite surface is, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the best one for you or your particular project. For some projects, it's super important that the project sticks very securely to the surface. For some, you might want to release quickly. For others, you may need a curved surface of a pre-existing shape. For other ones, you may need a help of a gridded surface and a carousel to make new shapes faster and easier. And what surface do you use if you want to make something rather big? Every project will have slightly different requirements, so you may need to customize your surface to it, and luckily you can. The most important feature of customizing your surface to your project is controlling how much your project sticks to the surface. Remember, adhesion was our number one requirement in the seven things you want from your work surface. Adhesion basically falls into four categories. High adhesion, low adhesion, over adhesion, and no adhesion. Let's look briefly at each so you know how to tell. If you can write on your surface in cursive, ideally something with lots of loops and it sticks, that is high adhesion. If it doesn't work 100% right, try again. Perhaps it's a matter of going more slowly or more carefully. If it sticks but slightly fails three times in a row, it's low adhesion. Now, low adhesion still works. You can make perfectly good shapes on a low adhesive surface. What happens with low adhesion is that the, if the new line touches or crosses the old one before it had a chance to cool down, it will strip it off the surface. So wait until the first lines cool before you work over them. Over adhesion happens when the release becomes so difficult, it will destroy your piece or surface or both. So why would you ever want over adhesion? for any liner techniques that keep the paper inside or all the times you want to attach your project permanently to some support surface to either hang it on the wall or use it as a base. No adhesion is easy to spot because the plastic will just not stick at all. But what if it is no adhesive surface but it is otherwise just so perfect for your project? It is just the perfect shape and size for what you were planning. The good news is there are methods to control your adhesion level. One of the more obvious and simple methods is to cover the whole shape with masking tape. The setback of this method is that it's a bit time consuming and the surface always stays a little bit bumpy, even if you burnish it well. And also watch out for those masking tapes that don't release well. Always test it first. The method of adhesion control I use the most is spraying the surface with a clear matte acrylic coating. These are the two brands I tested so far and depending on where you are you may have to hunt for a similar product in your area and test it. The beauty of this method is it works both ways. 
if the surface has no adhesion or low adhesion, it will bring it up to high, or at least okay adhesion. And if it's over adhesive surface, it will make it release more easily. Spray your surfaces outside and let them dry. Do two crisscross coats to make sure it's covered evenly and completely. The good news is this coating will last you a while. I was initially expecting to have to spray it before every use, but actually this works over and over for quite a while, depending how often you use it. After each use, you will see a ghost image of what you just made on your surface. So you can tell the coating is wearing down a bit each time. Once you start to feel it's starting to stick too much or too little, respray it again. I use this mainly on all the different pre-existing forms that are ideal for different projects, but not adhesive enough. Now, I haven't tested this spray on paper media because that's a complicated issue for which you may want to watch the previous video, seven things you want from your work surface, which goes more into the issues with paper surfaces. I also use the spray a lot on plexiglass surfaces. Plexiglass is very useful because it's easily available in any size. So if you need to make 18 inch ball, you can. Plexiglass is not only big enough, but also transparent, lightweight, and you can drill holes into it relatively easily, which does come up sometimes. Plexiglass is otherwise a slightly over adhesive surface, but with the spray, it becomes one that it's very good on adhesion as well as release. The only setback of plexiglass is that it's not quite as heat resistant as one would like for this kind of work. For most part it works, but avoid letting your pen rest too long on the surface. I never had any trouble with pens that have ceramic or plastic nozzles, but for pens with metal ones, you can melt right into your plexi surface. That will wreck the surface and also stick pretty permanently in that particular spot. So avoid letting the pen sit on the surface, especially when you are waiting for it to start up or to retract, which can take a second or two for some of them. If you are waiting, wait a hair above the surface, or as in this case, work on a surface designed for this particular pen. If you want to avoid the heat resistance problem altogether, it may be better to adjust some silicone surface, which is usually low to no adhesion, to a higher stick with the spray. Some silicone surfaces work better for this than others. I tried to spray my 3D Mate mat and it gave it way better adhesion on the back. Do not spray the front, that side doesn't need it. This particular spray didn't seem to have any bad effects on the silicone, at least not in the short run. But a disclaimer, I haven't been using it that way long enough to really know about any possible long-term effects. So be cautious and test your particular product. The coating needs to be refreshed more often than on plexiglass because the filament removes way more of the coating from silicone than the plexiglass. But on the plus side, it is perfectly heat resistant. Last note before closing. There are moments where you do actually need no adhesive surfaces like when you are baking or ironing your projects. But that will have to be another video. So stay tuned and subscribe if you want to know more.